So you followed my instructions and you brought your annuals inside, whether it's decorative things like these wandering dudes that I suggested you bring in, or it's maybe a, a, a vegetable like the tomato I suggested you take in. This is my dish of wonder. And with it came pests, as always, and disease. So today's video, we're going to go over how to manage the pests that may be on these plants currently, disease that may be on these plants currently, different methods you can use, homemade remedies that are actually incredibly dangerous and you should not use, and everything else in between. You guys kind of always know the drill, but I'm going to put this down because as we know, the geek crew knows I'm very animated with how I speak, even despite the fact that I'm not Italian at all. And I will eat this dirty ass water all over my floor and I'll have to clean my whole house sets gonna go safely right there for my sanity. So here's the thing. When you brought those plants indoors, you didn't just bring some greenery and plant inside. You brought a whole dang ecosystem. And with that ecosystem comes disease and pests. Outdoors, there's a predatory balance that doesn't exist indoors. Outside, we commonly will see things like predatory mites, ladybugs, even UV light can help to deter or decrease or suppress disease and pests. So unfortunately for you, things like spider mites, for example, which I find can be one of the most common issues, can and will double every five days under the proper conditions, warm and dry, such as your house. So I'm not going to be able to go over every single thing that you can encounter, but I am going to go through the ones that I have encountered over and over every single year how you can remedy these. So number one is going to be spider mites. So spider mites, they love low humidity and dry leaves and around 25-ish degrees Celsius. So your house, basically. Next up is mealybugs. Uh, if you've seen these, I just can't. They are so gross to me. I don't know what it is, but they just make me like much more so than spider mites. That is one that I encounter every single year without fail. Fungus gnats, I feel like this is something that pretty much everyone encounters. And then the last one is fungal leaf spot or powdery mildew. So first off, I want to get the whole dish Dawn soap thing out of the way. So dish Dawn soap is not soap. It is detergent. And this means it is designed for stripping waxes and oils. Fun fact, your leaves have a waxy substance on them, the cuticle. If we use Dawn dish soap, we strip that cuticle away. That cuticle is the equivalent to our skin and our ability to keep things outside of our body that normally are harmful that could land on our body. So this cuticle is essentially like the skin of a plant and similar to if we didn't have skin, everything would just enter us and we would get incredibly sick. So the cuticle, if we strip it away via Dawn dish soap over time, or even if we weaken it with Dawn dish soap over time, we very obviously are going to run into issues. Horticultural insecticidal soap is not the equivalent to Dawn dish soap. Tell everyone, yell it from the rooftops. If you want to go the soap route, which does work, by the way, it's a fantastic method to take care of moderate to minor infestations of insects, then go wild. But don't confuse that with the fact that it is a soap because it's those two things are nowhere near the same. Okay, the next solution is probably my favorite. And I think you, if you've been in the Geek Crew long enough, you've heard me speak about this, but I haven't spoken about them in a really long time, like I think several years at this point. So just as a refresher, my favorite are biological controls. I find these work way better than any sort of spray or application you could ever dream of in an indoor application. So one of the number one ones I enjoy are predatory mites issues, which is insane. So I personally, every single year, regardless of what's going on in approximately October, November, will take a brand called Grub Grenade, which is a Canadian brand. And in the U.S., I don't know what your options are, but for me, it's Grub Grenade. And I will launch those out into my plant room. You do not see them. You do not notice them. To me, they are non-existent after they have been applied. Spider mite looking things that just go through and they kill everything, literally all of it. And they are just a miracle worker. I absolutely adore these things. Number two is beneficial nematodes. So, and AKA predatory nematodes. So these work great for things like fungus gnats. So if you watch my seed starting video, you know that when I have a potting soil for seed starting, I will just dump a container of the nematodes into the soil just to help clear that up 
prior to planting. But if you have gnat issues in a potting soil that you brought indoors inside a container because you didn't refresh it, these nematodes can make a very big difference, particularly the generic versions that will take care of fungus gnats and anything that's a soil-borne issue. So mealy, like root mealies and that sort of thing, it will also take those out. Incredibly easy to apply. These you cannot see. They're not even spider mite small. They are microscopic small. So once you have laser vision, you're hooped. So the next one is Botanigard. So this is limited to some people as to who can access this. But essentially, it is a fungus. Bavaria bassiana, I think it's called. My Latin's horrible, sorry. Essentially, what it does is it causes like a fungal infection on things like spider mites and mealies, which eventually does kill the bug off without doing any harm to the plant. So it's biological control in a sense but technically it's fungal. So anyways, if you can get your hands on this, this is a great option because it works fantastic. Okay, so here's the plan of action you are going to follow. You're going to bring said plant indoors. And if you listen to me in my original video, I said you want to isolate these suckers. So this has been isolated to a window over top of my kitchen sink where I have to manually look at it every single day, regardless if I want to or not. There's no other plants in that space, zero. I take cuttings so I don't have to deal with soil. But if you have soil, you need to inspect the soil to make sure there's nothing wonky. You want to inspect the underside of the leaves, the top side of the leaves, the stems, any nooks and crannies for any signs of webbing, like damage, like scabbing, anything like that. You want to keep your, your eyes out, out for that. If you see that, you're going to treat that issue immediately. And then you're going to wait another two weeks. So the clock resets every single time you find an issue that is new after you've made an application. And this, I mean, only holds true for someone who has like a lot of houseplants that doesn't want the houseplants to get destroyed. If you've just literally got that bowl of cuttings and do whatever you want with it because it really doesn't matter. But I heavily implore you, if you have houseplants you love dearly, please follow these steps because otherwise you will be absolutely beside yourself. Now, the other reason why I have it by my sink is humidity. So there are many pests, particularly spider mites, mealybugs. They don't like moisture at all. So if I have it over top of my bathroom sink, in my kitchen sink, or my bat in my bathroom, if that's possible, that's like the best case scenario to put these cuttings because that humidity will just keep everything dead and destroyed and run its course much, much quicker. So the method that you choose is completely up to you. I highly, 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 highly encourage you to go the route of biological control. If you don't, can't stomach it, then you're really, your only option is that insecticidal. So I particularly like Endol. I find it to be the most effective. Neem, keep in mind, it's a systemic Pesticide, yes, it's organic, but it is systemic. Please look up what that means because if you don't want that in your garden, then it's definitely something you do not want to use right now because that would be bad. So you can expect to see these plants probably behind my head for all the winter filming that we will do in the plant room because that is where these guys are going to go after they're done their little isolation period here. I had one little instant of spider mites treated it. It's back on the windowsill for another two weeks or a week and a half now, I guess. And then I will review, see if anything new has cropped up. If so, the clock just keeps on resetting. So that's just the way that you handle this to make sure it doesn't annihilate everything in your house. Get creative to let me know in the comments down below what plants you've chosen to actually overwinter this year. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.